learning outcomes after studying this module you shall be able to know about the psychology and relevance of psychology in law about various laws related to psychology and about competency to stand a trial the study of mind and behavior is known as psychology it is an applied science which seeks to understand individuals by establishment of general principles a psychologist is a professional practitioner who tries to understand an individual and the role of various mental functions in an individual's behavior he or she analyzes a person's social biological and physiological processes that underlie the cognitive functions and behaviors other concepts such as perception cognition emotion intelligence personality behavior etc are explored in psychology now what is the relevance of psychology in law for proper functioning of society a legal system is necessary the legal system tries to solve many problems which exist in today's society psychology is not considered relevant by some legal authorities but it is relevant and important as law deals with the theories of behavior there are various benefits of including psychology to law such that it helps in improving and shaping the decisions of decision makers by giving them much more accurate images and pictures of human perceptions and preferences it helps in checking the integrity of the witness as in many case eye witness can be influenced easily or can be threatened it also helps in reduction of the false confessions next is the examination of various legally and socially significant areas is also included in psychological studies and true justice is ensured when the judgments are made after considering the psychological aspects of an accused mind there are two units of psychology which influence law and justice that is the legal psychology and the forensic psychology which together forms psychology and law first we will study what is legal psychology the legal psychology deals with social and the cognitive principles and their usage in the legal system empirical and psychological research of law along with legal institutions is the basis of legal psychology forensic psychology is based on the clinical orientation on experimentation unlike the legal psychology legal psychology has importance and it can be seen in the legal proceedings in various manners first is academics and research the legal psychologists basically conduct empirical research on new legal topics which are yet to be popularized they also work as mentors and guide to the upcoming legal representatives advisory role many a uh, time it is seen that the legal psychologist play an advisory role in the court systems they advise the judges and legal decision makers on some psychological issues pertaining to the concerned case next is trial consulting sometimes legal psychologist also work for trial consulting in some cases a psychologist who works as an academician is called up as a trial consultant when their expertise is helpful in any particular case trial consultants play different roles such as picking up the jurors performing mock trials etc next is policy making and legislative guidance a legal psychologist work is based on the empirical research and many a times there is a need to establish some policies based on the empirical research hence in those times of crisis they help the state and 
national lawmakers. Next is the amicus briefs. Amicus briefs primarily means to provide opinions with the scientific backup and statistics. But the assistance which a legal professional provides in the form of amicus briefs is questionable. And lastly, as an expert witness, legal psychologists are well trained to handle the legal issues even though they have no formal training. They are helpful in testifying the witnesses. They also test the memory of eyewitnesses whereas the forensic psychologist particularly testifies the competency of the defendant. Now we will study about the forensic psychology. Forensic psychology is the body of the scientific knowledge in applied psychology utilized for decisions in legal matters before a court of law. It may be used as the pre-trial stage during trial and post-trial stages also. It may be used for investigation, collection of evidence, for evaluation of the suspect or the victim, for quantum of responsibility of the subject or other involved persons or of the circumstances and to ascertain the correct cause of occurrence and the handling of the situation. Experts in forensic law help in the legal proceedings in various manners. Starting with the first, we have assessment of the mental condition. Forensic psychology helps in analyzing the mental condition with regard to the insanity plea which is a tactic adapted by people to avoid the death sentence and imprisonment. Hence, the forensic psychology helps in determining whether a person is really suffering from any mental disorder or not. Next is prediction of violence and risk management. Forensic psychology also helps in determining whether a person has violent tendencies or not. This indicates the harm that can be inflicted by such a person either upon himself or on others. This method is mainly applied when an accused is imprisoned or is set free. Next is the assessment of child custody in divorce cases. Determining the custody of a child after a divorce is the most crucial question and also a difficult decision to make as the child's future is at stake. So the forensic psychologist analyze the couple and after evaluating the situation, they recommend them to judge or jury as to whom the custody of the child should be given. Next is competency to stand trial. Since the trial process is too long and tiring, it cannot be handled by mentally or physically ill person. Hence, the forensic psychology helps in determining who can endure the trial and who should be immediately sent for psychiatric treatment. Next, we will study about the various laws related to psychology. There are various acts and laws which are related to psychology. First, here we will study about Section 84 of Indian Penal Code or IPC. Act of a person of unsound mind according to this act if a person has committed an offence because of unsoundness of mind and does not understand the nature of his or her act, he or she does not realise that what he or she is doing is wrong or contrary to law. Next law is the Indian Lunacy Act of 1912. It is an act to consolidate and amend the laws relating to lunacy. There are certain definitions used in this act which are first is the asylum. An asylum or mental hospital for lunatics established or licensed by the central government or any state government. Cost of maintenance in an asylum includes the cost of lodging, maintenance, clothing, medicine and care of a lunatic and any expenditure incurred in removing such lunatic to and from an asylum 
together with any other charge specified in this behalf by the state government in exercise of any power conferred upon it by this act next is district court means the principal civil court of original jurisdiction in any area outside the local limits for the time being of the metropolitan towns next is criminal lunatic any person who detention in or removal to an asylum jail or other place of safe custody an order has been made in accordance with the provisions of section 330 or sections 335 and 336 of the code of criminal procedure 1973 or of section 30 of the prisoners act 1900 or of section 103a of the indian army act of the year 1911 lunatic means an idiot or a person of unsound mind next is magistrate a uh, metropolitan magistrate district magistrate or subdivisional magistrate magistrate or a magistrate of the first class especially empowered by the state government to perform the functions of a magistrate under this act next is medical officer means a gazetted medical officer in the service of the government and includes a medical practitioner declared by general or special order of the state government to be a medical officer for the purpose of this act medical practitioner holder of a qualification to practice medicine and surgery and includes any person declared by general or special order of the state government to be a medical practitioner for the purpose of this act prescribed prescribed by this act or by rule made according to the act reception order an order made under the provisions of this act for the reception into an asylum of a lunatic other than a lunatic so found by inquisition relative includes any person related by blood marriage or adoption rule means rule made under this act third act is that of the mental health act of 1987 the mental health act or the mha 1987 was enacted for better treatment and care of mentally ill persons the act made provisions with respect to management of property and affairs of mentally ill person the act also provides protection of human rights of mentally ill persons the mha 1987 contains 10 chapters and 98 sections chapter 1 deals with various definitions chapter 2 provides procedure for establishing mental health authorities at center and state level chapter 3 deals with the procedure for establishment and maintenance of psychiatric hospitals or psychiatric nursing homes chapter 4 provides provision for admission and detention of mentally ill person in psychiatric hospital or psychiatric nursing home chapter 5 deals with the inspection discharge leave of absence and removal of mentally ill person chapter 6 deals with the judicial inquisition regarding alleged mentally ill person possessing property custody of his person and management of his property chapter 7 deals with liability to meet cost of maintenance of mentally ill person detained in psychiatric hospital or psychiatric nursing home chapter 8 deals with protection of human rights of mentally ill person chapter 9 deals with penal punishments ties and procedures chapter 10 deals with miscellaneous particulars there are certain terms defined in chapter 1 of this act first is the medical officer means a gazetted medical officer in government service appointed by the state government 
medical office in charge is a medical officer who for the time being is in charge of a psychiatric hospital or a nursing home medical practitioner means a person with recognized medical qualification under the provisions of this act mentally ill person is a person suffering from mental disorder other than the mental retardation needing treatment mentally ill person is a mentally ill person ordered for detention in a psychiatric hospital jail or other safe custody psychiatric hospital or nursing home is a hospital for the mentally ill persons maintained by government or private party with facilities for outpatient treatment and registered with appropriate licensing authority admitting a mentally ill to a general nursing home is an offense psychiatrist is a medical practitioner possessing a post graduate degree or diploma in psychiatry recognized by the medical council of india reception order means an order for admission and detention of a mentally ill person in a psychiatric hospital or a nursing home relative includes any person related to an mentally ill person by blood marriage or adoption new terms were included in this act by replacing the outdated terms and in this table we have shown the outdated term and in next column we have shown the new terms first is asylum the new term for asylum is psychiatric hospital or nursing then the outdated term lunatic for this lunatic outdated term the new term that has been provisioned is mentally ill person or mentally challenged for criminal lunatic it is mentally ill prisoner next we will study about the competency to stand trial various conditions such as mental retardation mental illness and neurological issues affect the emotional cognitive and behavioral faculties of a person which can impact the ability of a person to defend a case competency to stand trial is assessment of mental abilities of a person to defend their case the mental capacity of a person to participate in a legal proceeding is dealt in competency to stand a trial those defendants who are incompetent to stand a trial are not included in a criminal prosecution and the trial is postponed till the person is considered to be competent enough psychiatrically incompetent people who are not fit for trial are sent for treatment and are treated till they are competent enough for the trial earlier competency for trial was considered only for criminal cases but now it has been extended to civil cases as well in civil cases the competency is referred to as the capacity or sue or be sued the requirements with fitness for civil proceedings are different from the criminal case competency not only comprises of trial but other areas as well like threatening of investigating officers by the defendants that they will commit suicide on interrogation in such cases competency for interrogation is necessary and the investigating officers are requested for the mental health professionals to check the mental fitness of an individual the capacity of a person to understand the questions asked during interrogation and the court proceedings as well as to answer them intelligently and meaningfully is dealt under competency for interrogation in many cases the proceedings are delayed for decades due to incompetency to stand a trial there are many reasons responsible for the delay such as non availability of a psychiatrist ignorance non availability of psychotropic medicines etc due to lack of resources to combat the mental illness mental competency of a person to fight their case cannot be established
next is need for assessment of competency to stand trial and this we have the principle of natural justice the basis of principle of natural justice is two legal maxim first is nemo judex in sua causa which means nobody shall be judge in his own cause invalidating any judgment where there is a bias or conflict of interest or duty next is audi altrum partum which means to hear the other side and giving a fair opportunity to present one's case the main purpose of natural justice is to save justice and to prevent any misuse of justice for a fair trial and a valid decision these two fundamental principles are necessary in any legal system next is violation of right to a fair trial competency to stand trial is to make sure the autonomy and individual right of a person to defend himself or herself the most important question which arises is that whether the person can do so or not therefore the competency to stand trial has direct effect on deciding the right to a fair trial there are various reasons for determining the competency to stand a trial which are safeguard the accuracy of the proceedings to ensure procedural fairness to preserve the dignity of the legal system and to achieve the objectives of sentencing bonny gave three part rational that is dignity reliability and autonomy what is dignity running a trial against a person who lacks an understanding of wrong or right and then punishing him or her would offend the moral dignity of legal proceedings next is reliability the term reliability addresses that in order to provide an adequate defense the defendant must have the capacity to appreciate the utility of certain facts and the wherewithal or to provide court with that information if the defendant is not able to provide court with such information in such cases the reliability of the criminal proceeding is compromised next is autonomy it is based on the legal rules which make sure that the decisions regarding the defense must be made by the defendant right to fair trial is a human right and is listed under the acts and articles article 14 of the international covenant on civil and political rights which has been approved by india and is now a part of the protection of human rights act 1973 recognizes the right to fair trial as a human right the concept of a fair trial is a constitutional imperative recognized in articles 14 21 22 and 39a the code of criminal procedure crpc 1973 that is the procedure in case of accused being a lunatic crpc section 328 329 and 330 now students i will summarize all that we have studied in this module the study of mind and behavior is known as psychology legal psychology deals with social and cognitive principles and their usage in legal system forensic psychology is the body of the scientific knowledge in applied psychology utilized for decisions in legal matters before a court of law Section 84 of IPC is an act of a person of unsound mind. Indian Lunatic Act 1912 is an act to consolidate and amend the laws relating to lunacy. The Mental Health Act MHA 1987 was enacted for better treatment and care of mentally ill persons. Various conditions such as mental retardation, mental illness and neurological issues affect the emotional cognitive and behavioral faculties of a person which can impact the ability of a person to defend a case the requirements with fitness for civil proceedings are different from criminal case 
the proceedings are delayed for decades due to incompetency to stand a trial. Competency to stand a trial is to make sure the autonomy and individual right of a person to defend him or herself. Boni gave three part rational that is dignity, reliability and autonomy.